Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Illustrator, Illustrator 221, also 220, 219, etc., and the Crystallize tool. If I say halfway through, wrinkle tool, it's not. It's the Crystallize tool. Done a few run throughs of this, and quite often I someone say wrinkle tool. No, it's very similar, but instead it's a crystallize effect. Though I must admit, I wish there was a bit more ability to have straight lines, but there's not. You can see the effect of there, the crystallize, and you can see it over here. And you can see it here beneath the width tool. Quite an unusual tool to be under. However, there's a crystallize tool down there. There's a number of others. They're very similar in their approach. Adding points, moving points, basically. So you can double click or press return, and it brings up this control. Now you can put it to 10 or 20. Let's say first, a bit smaller. Say 14, 14. You can say, there and what you can do you can apply it and you'll notice it's very very subtle which is fine if that's what you want to create very subtle roughness to an edge of a path however also what you can do you can also set it to say like 400 which is more dramatic so you can set 400 and you can see the result there now sometimes you'll notice that the pass the not pass but the actual lines overlap a bit not much you can do about that unfortunately they do the tendency just to all over the place. Bring that back again, and then go to the slide. So press turn. Now what you can also do, you can set that not to 400, but you can set it to say like 100. So you don't have to have me equal. Now unfortunately there's no little linking, which is odd. Quite often, there's often this little sort of, uh, you can link them together, so you can set it to 300, 30, but you haven't here, you can to set it separately. So it's got 100, and then you can see the angle does make a difference. So you can just apply it, and it's just applied at like that straight line there. And of course you can vary it, so you can set it to not that angle, but maybe, and you can reduce the size, maybe make it 20, make it very thin. And you can change intensity. Now I'm gonna go for 80. And change the angle to 60, and you can see then the effect there. And it's going off that direction. Of course you can rotate the path and apply it that way if you want. And you can vary, obviously, the angle. You don't have to have it 60, it could be 23.5. And also you can reduce the intensity. So if you want it, say, very low intensity, which may be fine, you can just apply it 10 and you can see it takes a bit more time to generate the thing. But just run it over like that. Now what you can also do, you can add other paths. So if you add another path there, another path there. Now if I go and select that, don't have to select any of them actually, what you can do is just go over here, this tool, and you can see, you run over there, and you can, that one, it doesn't It doesn't seem to make sense sometimes. I must admit, I've done this in run-throughs. Sometimes it just works on one path, the first path you've selected, and then and it doesn't work on the others. This time it works on both, but it doesn't work on this one. Very strange. However, it can be made to work on all of them by selecting all of them, and then go into the going to the crystallize tool, and then and then apply it there. You can see that, or it, or any other tools, the wrinkle tool, etc. I say if I say wrinkle tool when I mean crystallize tool, I am talking about the crystallize tool all the way through this. It's just I've been using the wrinkle tool a few minutes ago, and that's stuck in my head. So that so you've got that design there. And I'm just gonna of course. I keep doing circle, but you can do other things. You can do stars. So you go for a star and go back again down to the crystallize, press return, and I'm going to set the intensity up again. And I'm also going to set the angle because I don't want that. I'm going to have it 300, 300. It's going to be circular. Also, what you can do, you can change the complexity. Now you can reduce that down to zero you can change detail, set that to nothing, and then you do it. You notice a lot more, well, there's no points being added. Well, certainly if there is, I can't see any added. So it's literally, you can reduce it down to very minimal if you reduce the complexity and detail. Let's just go for another pass as well. Let's go for a rectangle this way. This time, I'll change the color. Now, of course, what you can do, you can always, of course, turn around and get rid of that. And you can still use exactly the same with the crystallize. You can apply it like that. 
Let's just change the settings again. Because I've got the detail fairly low. I think it always works best with like two. Just keep it low. But if you want to, you can always put the detail up to quite high. Complexity higher. Let's go for that. And then you see Illustrator crashed just then. So it's probably best to avoid using complexity and detail, pushing it to the extreme. I have actually gone to fairly high settings for this, complexity and detail, and it hasn't crashed. But really, if you put it up to like nine or whatever, and all this complexity to 15, it really can sort of cause it to slow down and also crash. It does seem to be doing that a lot more of late. I don't know why. However, let's get on to the next thing. So keep it low and hopefully nothing will go wrong. So brush effects, anchor points. So I'm just gonna now just apply it with that. You can see then, I'm just gonna set it quite low. Let's go for 300. It's just more dramatic to see it at 400 and reasonably high there. And you can apply it like that. Brush turn. What you can also do, you can do for tangent handles as well. And you can see you get more a slightly curved design. Slight, subtle difference, but it is there. And also you can click that off and then click that one. And again, you get much the same curve still, but it goes out a different direction. And you can create designs like that. Let's turn again. And you can also, uh, let's just turn that off and just keep that on. So I've got those settings. I think I've run through virtually all of those settings. Of course, there's probably millions of other things you can do with it, but I think that's the basic run through of how to use this tool. However, you can, of course, use it with other things, and I'm just gonna run through some of those. I really like it with the mesh. Really creates a nice sort of paint effect. Now you can create mesh by using the mesh tool over here in tools. Also, you can go to object, and you can create a gradient mesh. Weirdly, it's called a gradient mesh, whereas in the other, it's called mesh. Oh. So you've got your design there, and I'm gonna move forward for just a very basic design, and you can select the individual points, and you can change colors. Now at this point you think, well, what's that got to do with the uh, crystallized tool? And I'm just going to go and change a few more. Don't want to do too many, but you've got that. So with that, you've got that design. You can go over here and you can apply this. And you can see as soon as you do that, it will change this. Now, of course, you might want to apply this very subtle with very low intensity. So you can create a more sort of like painted effect. But you can see what happens. The result is sort of a can really move and distort the design in all kinds of different ways. And you of course can always rotate it around like that and apply it and you can see then things will change. And you think you'd, let's go down this one, slide them there, all the points selected. Yes, let's select all the points would probably, yes, that would help. I was wondering why I was just applying it Nothing was changing. To select, you actually have to select the point so it actually can work. So you can see now what happens, it can get this real quite intense color burst. And of course you can duplicate that design if you want. There's a lot of points there. Again, with lots of points, King comes always that sort of worry that it's gonna fail. I don't know why that should be the case. To me, Illustrator should be the most solid of applications. But it's still with lots of points, seems comes great sort of ability to suddenly slow my machine down to the point where I have to quit the thing. So you've got that. What you can also do, of course, you can use it for other things as well. So you've got that design there, object, and you can go to envelope distort, and you can make with mesh. You've got mesh there. And then what you do, you go here to the thing, and you can see again, you've got that, and you can warp the mesh, which, so you can distort the underlying image there. It's another possibility. Also, another thing you can do, I think it's quite good for, is creating patterns. So you've got a design there. Let's just change color. And what you need, just go to object, go down to pattern and make. Click OK, and you've got your design there. And then go here again, and then you can play your design, and you can see what happens. It just, obviously too great, one of these ones that it's probably best to reduce the intensity down and the size, so make it like 200, 230 or something like that, and then apply it. Otherwise it just goes too quick, and you can 
don't have the control over it in the way. And of course you can add additional paths there and you can then save that. So you've got a really more interesting design there. So cancel there. Also another thing you can do is you can use this with the new repeat. Now if you haven't got 221, you can't do this. This is only in 221. So I'm just gonna create a design there, object, and then down to repeat, and then you've got radial grid and mirror. I'm gonna go with radial, and you can see the design there. Now at this point, of course, you can just go back here, and you can think, oh, I can apply it. It won't work. What you need to do is you need to double click into the design. So you've got the design there, and you obviously can move it around. But what you can also do, you can use this. So and you can add additional points there, and maybe make a mess of it, and you can always undo. So if you want to, and you can see all affected all the way around the whole thing. So you can create some very interesting oddball designs there. So I think the repeat's pretty useful with the crystallize as well. And also you can also you can just do that. You got there, you can set that to that and black, and you can of course apply is that the same? And you got your like that and you can then of course combine it so hold down the ultra option key you can create all kinds of very very rough intense backgrounds made up of lots and lots of different lines which of course you can then select and you can go through and create even more sort of thing. and not only that of course what you can do you can always go to the properties always super useful you've got stroke here you can obviously change the stroke so you can make it like that and then you can also click there and you've got the profile, so you can set the profile. So you can change the profile there, change that. So you can see, you can create all load of different designs with different profiles as well to create some different scratchy sort of unusual designs like that. Select all of those. Now you can also use the crystallized tool with other shapes as well. I've been using it obviously, you've got the curvature tool, you don't have to have it with normal convention. Maybe just have a line. You know, just a standard open path. Just standard open path there. And you can go and go to the crystallize. And of course, I could set all the settings, but I'm just going to apply it just to show. You can just add it to a standard path. And you can then you've got a more sort of a rough path. Again, what you can do, you can always go to the here to the stroke. Maybe set that. And you can click there again and go to the width profile. You can see you can create that. And of course. Then width tool, of course, is above, so you have to you can modify the different parts of the design, etc. And you go back again to the crystallize tool and apply. Now the crystallized tool, what happens then it goes out there. Now, what also you can do, you can use type. That's another one. Now images probably won't work. I'm certain it won't work with images. It'd be nice if it did. God, that would be lovely. However, I don't think it would. So you can use type. So I'm just going to go over here. Type. Now type, I would suggest you would have to use with a lower setting. So just going to put the word type, very original. I'm just going to go there. But you have to expand it first. You can't use the crystallize with type like this. So go to object and expand. Click OK. You've got your design there. And what you can then do is you can go to the crystallize. But double click. Or press return, and then you can say, I would suggest maybe not 200, but maybe 40 or 50, just something low. Uh, and you can use angle as well, perfectly reasonable, and maybe 20 for that, complexity, all that low. And then you can just simply apply, just go over the text, and you can roughen the text up. If that's what you want to do with roughening text up, it's a great way of controlling it. So you can maybe make less roughened one side, maybe more roughened, roughed up on the other side which is always a possible as well. So you've got that design. Now, I haven't tried this, and I'm certain it probably will fail, because quite often whenever I suddenly think, you know what, maybe it might work. So I'm just gonna change the color there, the green, I'm just gonna change the color there to a red, select those, and then go to the blend tool, click there, click there, and you've got this design. Now, what, let's see, crystallize, crystallize tool, and you can, oh, you can. Now, obviously, that's very small, subtle. So press turn, let's go for 80 and set it to 200. Sometimes it works different ones, it's probably better. So you can see, then you can create some interesting variations on your design like that. You're also varying 
So very quick and easy sort of paint splatter design there, which I think is quite nice using the blend tool, which is super useful. Sometimes when you go and try and think, you know what, it's going to work with this tool, you use it and suddenly it doesn't, which is always a pity, but that's, uh, but this time it does work. So, which is great. And I am certain there are other tools here that I probably could use with the crystallized tool as well. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. My apologies for halfway through the thing that it suddenly fell over because like I say, I have the detail setting. So I would suggest avoid maybe pushing it really high with the detail because you really get an intense, lots of points, and then it just... Now, it maybe it wasn't crashing. It was just taking, I was actually waiting for about 15 minutes before it actually, but I thought I'd stop. It's obviously clearly not doing anything. So uh, I just, it, uh, so that was the thing. Well, always any new tutorials all the time, daily, and also for, obviously for Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Also, uh, dislike or like, always appreciated. Also, any comments, so anything you think I did wrong, anything I did right, or anything else you can think of in the crystallized tool that I didn't use or didn't explore, do you think, well, that, that would be even better with the crystallized tool? It's always great to find that out. Thank you much.